Highway 62 is called one of the most desolate roads in the state of California. I call it the gateway to the Rice Valley wilderness and to a desert adventure. Most folks use Highway 62 to get from Southern California to Joshua Tree or 29 Palms. Continue east on 62 and you'll find a lonely two-lane road that stretches for more than 100 miles through the desert. If you know where to look, there's plenty to see and do. Welcome or welcome back to Muddy Ruts Overlanding. This overlanding trip would take me nearly 600 miles from the San Francisco Bay Area to the Rice Valley Wilderness in the southeast corner of California. I loaded up my Jeep Wrangler Eco Diesel and my X-Venture XV3 off-road trailer and began the journey by heading south. After passing through Bakersfield, California and crossing the Tehachapi Pass, it was time for a break at the Boron Rest Area on Highway 58. You can support my channel by purchasing one of these Zargis Aluminum Overlanding Cases. There's a link in the description that helps the channel. That night, I made it to the Sawtooth Canyon Campground just south of Barstow, California. This is a BLM campground, very popular with rock climbers. It's free camping, and the rock formations seem to jut right out of the desert. I seem to always arrive here at night. Next morning, I woke up, made a quick coffee and breakfast, and took a good look around the campground. It's easy to see why this is a favorite campground for rock climbers. I packed up and headed south on Highway 247 that takes you past the Johnson Valley where they have the famous King of Hammers race every year. I would meet up with Highway 62 and go past Joshua Tree and 29 Palms on my way to the Rice Valley Wilderness. Imagine yourself driving through this barren, isolated, and rugged desert wilderness. Highway 62 is also sometimes referred to as a 29 Palms Highway. At this intersection, you can head south on 177 to Desert Center, or you can keep going east all the way to the Colorado River. My plan was to continue east on Highway 62 till I met up with the Rice Shoe Fence. This is where you'll find the Rice Midland Road, which is a dirt road that heads south through the desert to Midland, which is an abandoned town and then further on to Blythe, California. I don't know what started folks hanging shoes from this abandoned gas station, but it is quite unusual and maybe even a little crazy. If you're enjoying the video or finding value in it, please hit that thumbs up button, give me a like, share the video, and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. To the Rice Valley Wilderness a little late in the day, but I still have time to stop and take in the scenery. It's getting a little late, so I'm going to continue on and find a place to camp. Being alone and isolated in the middle of the desert is an awesome experience, but it is a little nerve-wracking. I found a great place to camp and then climbed around on the hills surrounding the campsite to get some great video and pictures of the beautiful desert sky in the winter. I had some dinner and then got the campfire going, just sat by the fire and took in the awesome scenery around my desert campsite. The next day I packed up my camp and headed out on the next leg of this desert adventure. I got back on the Rice Midland Road and headed a little farther south to where I could pick up the Midland Vidal Road and that would take me right through the center of the Rice Valley Wilderness. Don't forget to check the description of this video where you'll find more information and some great links if you want to support my channel. I got back on the Rice Midland Road and headed to a spot where I'd be able to access the Midland Vidal Road. It gets a little confusing because there's roads going all over the desert. As I was driving, I began to realize that the road I was on hadn't seen much use in quite a long while. I stopped at a spot where I knew I could still turn my trailer around and sent my drone out on a scouting mission. I realized I was heading into a blind canyon, so I turned my rig around and headed back the way I came from. Since this is BLM land and dispersed camping is allowed, I did see quite a few spots that people had used for camp and the remnants of their fire rings. Driving through all these washes where the road dips down, 
made me realize being out here in a rainstorm would be a whole different experience. Black Hill is coming into view pretty quickly. If you know anything about Black Hill or any other interesting things about the Rice Valley Wilderness, please leave me a comment. I headed back far enough and took a couple different turns to where I found a road sign that said Midland Vidal Road. I also realized that the Midland Vidal Road is also a road used to access these power lines. So now I knew I was on my way to Vidal. The road is in very good condition for the most part. I was enjoying all the views and being out in the desert by myself, but I was wondering what kind of challenges might lie ahead on the road to Vidal. I found this one section where the road was completely washed out and somebody had left some rocks and some sticks to warn others. Fortunately, there was a way to get around it. I decided that was a good opportunity to stop and have a snack, so I got out, cut up a grapefruit. When I'm exploring an area for the first time, I tend to hurry up and try to get through pretty quickly, not knowing what I'm going to encounter. But it's definitely important to stop and look around and really take in and enjoy where you are and how lucky you are to be there. I encountered a lot of washes, like what you see here. They are much steeper than what they look like on the video. I'm always in four-wheel drive whenever I'm on a desert road or a gravel road, but a couple times I had to throw the Jeep into four-wheel low just to make sure I could get up the other side. I had no idea bicyclists might use this route to get through the desert. I would love to do it on my mountain bike, but I would definitely want to be vehicle supported. I passed between the two mountain ranges and then the desert opened up again. Eventually, I came on to a spot called the Rice Valley Dunes. They have their own set of dunes out here in the Rice Valley wilderness. This sand was really soft and I knew if I stopped, I would get stuck, so I kept my momentum, but I'm definitely gonna come back and I'm going to explore these dunes a lot further. I started seeing several signs that show that there are trails that intersect the Midland Vidal Road. Each of these signs indicates another idea for another exploring adventure. The terrain changes are amazing all along this route and the breathtaking views and landscape, and I did not see another soul the entire time. This is a very lightly traveled, but incredibly beautiful and impressive area to explore. I found my way all the way to Vidal and was surprised to learn that this is where their Wyatt Earp cottage lies. I guess this is one of the last places Wyatt Earp lived. The trail takes you out to where it meets Highway 95, not far from the Colorado River and the Arizona border. Definitely a beautiful little cottage in the middle of basically nowhere, I guess you might say. The train does run through Vidal. That would have been really important back before the time of the automobile. This exploration of the Rice Valley Wilderness was an incredible day out in the desert without seeing another soul but it was time for me to head back home. So I found a spot to camp and BLM that night. Then eventually the next day, I ended up back at Sawtooth Canyon Campground. This was the first time I had ever reached Sawtooth Canyon Campground when there was still light out. The next day I would head back to the Bay Area. There will definitely be more adventures and more videos that take place in the Rice Valley Wilderness. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one, and don't forget, the best is yet to come. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now, I really appreciate you watching. Thank you.